Let's have a conversation. This conversation is about a Harley rider's perspective on the new Rebel 1100. What does it look like? How does it feel riding it in comparison to the Harley Davidson? So let's have this conversation, but let's take it on the road. Hello everyone, I'm Fletch, and today I'm going to take it on the road and have a conversation about a Harley owner's perspective on the new Rebel uh, 1100 2021. Now the Rebel was first introduced quite some time ago, I'll probably put it up in the description. They got a few different models, the 300, the 500, but here we're specifically talking about uh, the 1100cc. The latest model obviously was introduced this year. The new model was launched in January 2021. Now, unfortunately, the local dealership only brought in the 500cc. So I'm really waiting to see if they bring in the 1100cc so that uh, maybe I might reach out to them and ask to do a test ride. And then maybe we could have an even better conversation while I'm on that particular bike. Now, a, a preface to that is I I've ridden a lot of Honda bikes. In fact, I've owned three uh, different types of bikes from Honda. The first of which was a 400cc called the Super 4. I uh, used it to ride around the city. Uh, it was meant to be just a little urban uh, rider for transport and stuff. Uh, that was many, many years ago, in the 90s, I believe. And then in probably in the early 2000s, uh, I had the Fireblade, which is a 1000cc, the CBR 1000 double R with the underseat pipe. And of course that was a mean machine. It's a different kind of monster. It's not a cruiser. And basically, you know, it was fun to ride, lots of horsepower. It's a racing bike. I mean, it won a couple of uh, motor GPs as well. And then finally, I think in 2017, I got myself the CBX 400, which was a, a kind of adventure bike and it had a parallel twin. And it was also on about 400 cc's. Amazingly enough, I could take it up to good speed actually took it to Phuket, Thailand, which was an achievement in itself. Now, Honda bikes are, in general, very, very reliable. I've had them for years. I've had no issues with them. They were bulletproof, basically. I've never had any issues whatsoever. When it comes to cruisers, I know that Honda produced the Honda Fury, which was a 350cc. It was a chopper, long forks and uh, everything else, and touted to be their first cruiser. But, you know, honestly, uh, it looked good, but it didn't handle as well. Probably hard on the U-turns and so forth because of the long forks. But it was still, I'm sure, a reliable bike, but it didn't last very long. So back to the Honda Rebel 1100. Now, that bike really catches the eye. I mean, it has really good styling. It has the real look of a cruiser, typical uh, of what you would find in any cruiser, and styling of which is very similar to the Harley Davidson. At first glance and looking at the images and, and the ride videos, I realized that uh, it even has something that looks like uh, ape hangers, you know, it's got a, a nice aggressive stance. It just looks good, right? It looks to a Harley Davidson owner. I w I'm so attracted to that particular bike. I know that for sure, if I ever get it, uh, I, I will probably be very comfortable with it for many reasons. We will talk about it in a minute. But just like any review that I do, let's talk about certain things, right? So we'll talk about power, comfort, handling, and touring. So let's talk about power. That's an 1100cc bike. It may not look sound like much. The power rating on it is about 84 horsepower. Now the Harleys at, its, at their best can only produce the, at the low 70s. So it's got easily 10, 15 horsepower ahead of it. 
the Harley Eagle, mine at least, weighs about almost 300 kgs. The Honda Rebel weighs about 240 kgs. So when you talk about that kind of horsepower, that kind of torque, obviously it's going to be a better performance bike. Obviously. I know we, we always say that uh, to a lot of people that, ah, you know, it's a Harley Davidson, it's a cruiser. Uh, it's not supposed to be powerful. You're not in a race, blah, blah, blah. But hey, our displacements put almost 800 cc's on top of that Rebel. And yet, it will probably be able to produce better power. It will mean probably more comfortable rides. It will mean that you have enough power to get out of any instance. Cruising long distances at a sustained rate or sustained speed would be very comfortable. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not putting down the Harley. Uh, I love the Harley Davidson uh, because of the community and the camaraderie and, and so forth and all of that. But, you know, sometimes we cannot be stuck in our ways. I, and anyway, in my life, I've, I've ridden so many types of bikes. Uh, it's just that I am attracted to this bike. In my last stream, which I'll put it up uh, in the cards, someone brought it up that, you know, when you buy a bike, you have to be comfortable on it and look good on it. If you don't feel comfortable on it, you don't look on it, you don't feel good on it, don't get it, right? And, and I feel all of that for the Harley Davidson now, but the Honda Rebel, in terms of styling, kind of pulls at the heartstrings, you know, pull at the heartstrings. And it really looks like a really good cruiser. So power to rate ratio, obviously it's, it's going to be better, it's going to be faster. If a 400cc can do 180 kilometers an hour, man, 1100cc should be no problem. And then last but not least, of course, you've got uh, the parallel twin engine inside, right? And that um, is a well-proven engine. It's, with, it's actually from the African twin. So that is a really outstanding bike for an adventure tourer, but putting it on a new frame for a cruiser, I think that really is awesome. Now, in terms of comfort, again, I can't say very much uh, about it, except to say that uh, from images, they are running a mid control. I mean, to me, mid controls are about aggressiveness, you know, and, and be able to handle twisties in corners and stuff, you know, but for, again, all those measurements will not be able to tell me how I would fit on that particular bike. Uh, again, I'm six feet, so if I can sit comfortably without, you know, my knees above my waist line when I'm putting my feet down on the pegs, then I'm assured of comfort. Otherwise, for controls, and they do have four controls, and again, th it doesn't mean that you ha if you have four controls that you won't be able to do twisties and stuff. I have done it on this bike, right? No issue. One of the things I can talk about in terms of comfort is the fact that they've introduced in, for this Rebel 1100, the DCT, right? So that's the dual clutch transmission. Dual tr clutch transmission means that it's basically an automatic uh, motorcycle. Let's talk about comfort. The Honda Rebel 1100 is not just the seating position, uh, the fact it has mid controls, but also the fact that it has modes, riding modes, right? And the riding modes are really interesting, and I think they should have. I mean, they, they put it on all the, their cruisers, they put it on their touring bikes, uh, they even have it on their African Twin. And basically, what it is, is that you actually have means of controlling the bike by these modes, 
uh, and they have the standard rain and sport. Standard, obviously, is the standard riding. Rain would mean that you would have better traction, more torque in the low end, less power in the rear wheel, in a sense, uh, to be so that you won't have any slippage and, and you have better traction on the, on the slippery ground. And of course, sport is when you want to get up and go. They even have one more mode, which is user customization mode. And I suppose that's really good too, because then we can decide to put a, a program, a mode, maybe between rain and standard, if things are a little bit bad and so forth. Also, in terms of comfort, for the Rebel 1100cc, Honda has introduced into their baggers, or into their touring bikes, is the DCT, or the dual clutch transmission. This will mean that the bike is totally automatic. As an automatic bike, it will mean that, you know, you don't have to handle the clutch. In, in bad traffic, you, you're not getting cramps in the hand. And long distance, you, you basically your hands are just relaxed on the on the handlebars and it will mean that that kind of comfort of course it, it comes with uh, the model comes with a choice anyway so if you want DCT or you want the regular uh, cable clutch and, and lever they also have that but that being said it comes with switches on the side that you can manually change the gears well should you need to right sometimes to overtake you need to downshift you can still downshift without clutching in and without having to do much you can just shift with your fingers, right? Like a sports car, so to speak. And I think that's really great. Probably won't suggest that for Harley Davidson, I don't know, because you know, when we, for those of us who buy a Harley Davidson, we are looking at the simplicity of things, hardly any electronics. Uh, we wanted the, the simple bike, so to speak, so to speak, right? To me, there's, there's something to be said about comfort as well. And the, the fact that it's a cruiser at that displacement, it also has cruise control, right? Cruise control, my goodness. I don't even have it on this. To me, that is a godsend, especially in a wide open road, hardly any traffic. Again, in terms of comfort, that is a really awesome thing to have. To have cruise control is something that I would really want. I would really like. You know, it means that you can have real comfort. You don't have to worry about, and again, it's, you know, you, you're not on the throttle. Your hands are just resting on the handlebars and you're just going at the speed that you want to go. That to me is really very good. So in terms of comfort for cruising and everything else, I think those are the key things that's really attracting me to the Honda Rebel. Now let's talk about handling. As I mentioned earlier, oh, the weight for the Rebel is about 240 kilos. Now, 240 kilos or 300 like this one does not stop on a dime. So what did they add? Dual disc brakes with four calipers on the front brakes. Amazing stopping power you have for that. And they're probably using Nissan. Uh, which are really very good brakes anyway. Uh, I'm sure that at the later stage they probably can add Brambo brakes or, or what have you. To me, that is really awesome. The way I know it works, let me draw your attention to this little clip on the promo that they have. background on that clip basically what happened is that they showed how nimble the bike was and they talked about how it can handle it showed the Honda Rebel ducking into an alleyway and as it made the second turn it, I think the rider realized that it was an obstruction uh, meaning those garbage containers in the way you could literally see the rider slamming on the brakes and then flick it uh, to the left so they can get out of the way. Now I think that is an excellent showcase of how nimble that bike is, how well the brakes reacted because he literally came around the corner and saw that thing. I don't know if it was intentional or not, 
But the fact that they showed it and it reacted, it just proves to me that that bike handles well, stops well, is nibble enough to throw it. I tell you, if I came around the corner with this diner, I'll be scraping paint. I'll be scraping paint. I'm not saying I can't slam on the brakes and then toss it, but you know, this is a longer bike. I believe it's a longer bike. And because of that, it will mean that I may not make that corner with that kind of obstruction. Not that I will always go into an alleyway anyway. There's no reason for me to, but I think that's a good showcase of it. So we talked about uh, power, comfort, and handling. So let's talk about touring. I've seen the website and they already have accessories for it, windshields, luggage, what have you. I think just like any other cruiser, you could customize it. They, they, and I, I even saw a windshield that looks so much like the, the Memphis Shade Shields. Uh, if there was a stock Honda one, I think that's awesome because, it, because then it'd be great for touring. It'll keep the wind off you because you want to go and you don't want to have the wind slamming against your chest and there's a lot of fatigue, right? So we'll always put some kind of fairing or shield on it to increase the comfort level and be able to tour. So you can put bags on it, you could put a windshield on it, change out the bars, I'm sure, if you want to. And last but not least, of course, uh, it's already a two-up seat, I believe. So you can actually have your, your, your pillions on it. I, I think that's an awesome bike. With all, that, with all that it has, I think it's an excellent touring bike. So, what are my thoughts? Like I said, I've owned a lot of bikes. And I've owned several Honda bikes. So I know that in terms of reliability, Honda is definitely up there with the rest. In terms of looks, it really is an attractive bike. I think that the Honda Rebel has the, the, the good balance between the old school styling, the bubble styling, uh, the aggressive hands in the air or knuckles to the wind kind of riding stance, mid controls for aggressiveness, forward controls like me if you want uh, to have a more comfort. So in conclusion, with the power to weight ratio, the 84 horsepower, cruise control, DCT, great braking power, and a nice aggressive styling and cruiser-like controls. Do I want to get the Honda Rebel? Well, that's something to really consider. In my age, comfort is really one of the more important things. You know, as you get older, you prefer something a little bit easier. It's nice to ride a simple bike, you know, but you want the comfort for long distances and that's what we're into. So as a really great cruiser, I would recommend the Rebel 1100 to any rider, whether you're a beginner or an experienced rider. So if you want comfort, handling, and the ability to tour long distances, that's what I'll do. Will I consider changing? Maybe. It's something to think about in the future. Anyway, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't yet, please click the like button. And if you're new to this channel, please click the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell to let you know when my next video is out. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Fletch and you have a great ride.